familiar and trusted faces on our television, and often it's from their mouths that we hear the big stories of our time. From the shooting of JFK to the death of Elvis, from Princess Di's fatal car crash in Paris to the 9-11 attacks and the Bali bombing. These days, television news is a high-tech whir of satellite crosses, graphics and images. Good evening. A massive explosion on the Indonesian island of Bali. It hasn't always been that way. Elvis Presley died today. When TV news began, it wasn't much more than reading a radio broadcast. Mr Harrison said employees of the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation were feeling uncertain about their future employment. But the one constant is how familiar we become with the newsreaders. Good evening, David Johnston from London. Today, a city subdued after the emotional and physically exhausting funeral and burial of Diana, Princess of Wales. Night after night, they're in our lounge rooms, telling us what happened in the world that day. As we go to air this evening, the future of China is in the balance. And eventually, they all have to give their final sign-off. Roger Clemson for Seven National News. Good night. Please welcome those mostly unflappable, cool, calm and collected customers who never trip over their words and know how to pronounce Wagadougou and Boutros Boutros Kali. <laughs> James Dibble, who pioneered TV news from 1950 to 1983. Roger Clemson, a veteran of 35 years. who read the news from 1963 until 2005. Richard Moorcroft, who presented the ABC News for 20 years. And Australia's first female newsreader, Margaret Crosby. Well, welcome everybody. Let me tell you, we're very nervous. <laughs> and all these professionals <laughs> around. Never us. admit it. <laughs> <laughs> now, James, you were the first person to read the ABC News back in 1956. It was a, a lot different back in those days. Let's take a look. Good evening. The Indonesian government has begun its invasion of rebel-held central Sumatra. First reports of the invasion were received from Singapore early this morning. It has changed so much, hasn't it? Yes, I don't know what they did with that set designer, but he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> I quite Still like the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> because you actually had to read it from paper. Sort of people may not know that on cameras now all the words come up with an auto cue. Back then you had oh, none of that. that. Yeah. Oh, no, they never told me that. <laughs> Good heavens. It doesn't work all the time, James. <laughs> James, you, you presented the TV news for almost three decades. Was there a story that particularly stood out for you? Probably one that I remember very vividly was when a young boy was kidnapped, uh, Graham Thorne. He was only about seven years old, I think. And his father came on making a plea for the kidnapper to return his son. And that was so, oh, you know, heartbreaking. Well, let's take a look at that news conference. Is there any appeal you'd like to make to me? Well, all I can say is that the person that's got him, if he's a father, and got children of his own, well, for God's sake, send him back in one piece. Yeah, I remember that vividly. Now, as I said, you, you hosted the TV news for almost three decades, and then Richard Moorcroft stepped into your right. shoes. You, uh, you took up the role in 1983. Big shoes to fill? They were enormous shoes to fill, um, and it was a great honour to, uh, to be asked to fill them. Um, James started reading TV news in the year that I was born. Which was, uh, you know, I thought a, a really oh. nice. Well, you need to remind him of that, Richard. Now, come on. <laughs> a really, it was a really nice coincidence. Oh, um, but they were they were wonderful shoes to step into. But I, I wonder now, uh, as I look back on that time, what the what the audience would have made of me. I was a, a very uh, a, a very big change from uh, the newsreader that they knew and loved. Margaret Throsby, you were our first female newsreader. In 1978, it was such a big deal, wasn't it? And you made the news yourself by, by taking on the it role. It was a huge deal, actually, and it made the front page of the papers. I mean, it was ridiculous. Here is the news read by a woman, said one headline, you know, and, and there were cartoons. There was one wonderful cartoon of 
me, it was undoubtedly me, with my hair in curlers and a fag hanging out of my mouth, <laughs> on the, uh, leaning over a fence saying, and here's the news, you know, and talking to my next door neighbour. You know, and it was so sort of sexist and mm. dreadful. And all people talked about was what I looked like, what my hair looked like and what mm. I wore. Did you have any mm. sense at the time, though, of what a trailblazer you were going to be, that, that you were going to pave the way for, well, for I other thought, women? Well, I, I think I did a few months later when Channel 10 appointed Katrina Lee. It was as if the commercial channels were waiting for the ABC to do this. Yeah, I suppose it was a bit trailblazy, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How <laughs> important was it to look good? I notice you blokes, only Roger still wears a tie. Yeah. I lost mine on the way to the studio. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> He actually did. He did. Yeah, he did. Right. He has lost a balance because I always wore shorts under the desk anyway, so it didn't, you know, uh, uh, tie did up you here. Did you really? Shorts like that everyone always asks that, don't In they? In summertime, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a tie, as a newsreader, is the one statement that you can make that's individualistic. <clears throat> because, I mean, mostly you're wearing a suit and a shirt and a tie for the main news bulletin. To me, a tie represents my personality. Oh, so what sort of ties did you wear, Roger? Uh, <laughs> very much like yours, actually. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. David, your first news bulletin was a doozy, wasn't it? It coincided with one, at one of the biggest news events in history. Yes, 22nd of November 1963, the assassination of President Kennedy. And I can remember waking up in the morning and switching the radio on at about 7 o'clock and in the haze I heard Kennedy had been shot. And I thought, who'd want to kill Graham Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't understand that. Soon found it was President Kennedy, of course. And then I thought, um, oh, they'll bring in one of the senior people because this is my first major bulletin at 6 o'clock because it's such an important story. But they said, no, you're on the roster, you do it. So there was all this activity, so much so that I just forgot about being nervous altogether. And so I had to concentrate on the, on the job. Got through that and thought, oh, this is easy, this news, everything in business, that's fine. And it was the next news bulletin where everything fell apart. <laughs> David, tell us about uh, covering the death of Princess Diana, because that is probably one of the biggest stories of, of recent years. Well, a huge story, as everyone knows, but um, I'll never forget stepping off the plane in London, this huge city, this buzzing metropolis, and it was like walking into a house where someone's died. It was absolutely quiet. And hundreds of thousands of people gathered around St James Palace, Buckingham Palace, and I don't know if you've ever been with 100,000 people before who are silent. It was just the eeriest feeling. A few sobs here and there, but the absolute um, quietness of the whole city, I couldn't believe. It was very eerie. The biggest story you'd covered, Margaret? The biggest news story I think I ever covered, well, that was the, a big one for radio, but for television, was when Holt, um, Harold Holt disappeared. And I'd been working at the ABC for about a month, I think, at that time, or two months. Somebody found a jacket and a shirt and put it on me, and I sat in, I'd never sat in front of a television camera in my life. <laughs> the Prime Minister's disappeared, I said. Where am I, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and Roger, what about you, as, as one stood out for you? I think probably the landing on the moon. It was the most incredible day I've ever experienced, I think, because for the first time before or since, in my opinion, the whole world seemed to be on the same side. Everybody. And I remember particularly, I also had the pleasure that day of, um, of uh, hosting the actual launch for the Channel 7 network from here. And about three o'clock in the afternoon, I was on air and I suddenly saw everybody in the control room had got cups of coffee. And I hadn't got a cup of coffee. So I was on air, so I just said, what does one have to do here to get a cup of coffee? <laughs> Within about five seconds, I got a cup of coffee. But meantime, this enormous truck pulls up into Channel 7. The fellow gets out, a Nestle's truck, gets out the back, staggers into the, into the studios with this great big box and said to the receptionist, would you please make sure that Roger Clemson gets that? He wants a cup of coffee. <laughs> Doing Sunrise, we know all about technical hitches. <laughs> Live television, auto cues don't work, satellite feeds don't work, anything like that. Roger, are there any sort of glitches that you remember? What about when the Pope arrived? Yes, Pope Paul VI it was came to Sydney in the late 1960s and there was complete chaos when he arrived the day that he arrived and the very first thing that he did was go across Sydney Harbour on a ferry to open a new building at Manly. I introduced the news by saying ladies and gentlemen it's home as the Pope is here of course as you know and the first thing he did this morning was go across Sydney Harbour on a ferry to open the building. Up comes the footage of the Pope going across Sydney Harbour on the ferry all fine 
there was only one thing wrong. He was going across Sydney Harbour upside down and backwards. <laughs> it was a miracle. <laughs> well, I mean, the director, uh, he shall remain nameless, the director will be nameless. He panicked, went to black, and then came back on me. <laughs> I mean, what am I, what am I supposed to say? So I said the first thing that came into my head, which was, well, I bet you never did that before. <laughs> After the break, we catch up with two pioneering women who changed the face of television news forever.